The big game is fast approaching, but wait, you still haven't got your tickets. You've spent hours searching, but you're still confused about ticket prices. Time to stop searching. Visit TicketCompare.com. We compare ticket prices for all the popular leagues and tournaments for you. We work only with the most trustworthy sites, so you can have peace of mind when buying your tickets. Compare prices, buy tickets, get to the game. TicketCompare.com. Buying tickets made simple. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. <coughs> Hello. So we'll go with usual Friday rules then, guys. Uh, You're going to lead off Sky. Hello. How are you? Um, first of all, what's it feel like to be the uh, new manager of West Bromwich Albion? Well, of course, um, you know, coming into a new club and the traditions that they have here is exciting. So, and 11 months out for me. So, looking forward to working with the team. Uh, done a little bit of homework on the group. Uh, nothing but good messages from there, that uh, they're a good sound group. Confidence obviously perhaps a little bit low at the moment. We need a win and, and hopefully we can get that as quick as we can. What has the past 11 months been like for you? Were you uh, getting frustrated? Were you, were you getting bored? Did you, did you feel a chance had gone to be a Premier League manager again? No, I, I, I certainly uh, reflected on my time at uh, uh, my previous clubs and particularly at Crystal Palace. Uh, and also went and see different organisations, how they work, how they function, and uh, management styles, etc. And obviously worked with Sky, which I thoroughly enjoyed and uh, met some good people and understood uh, how your side works a little bit. So that was all refreshing. But of course, it's just the training ground that you miss, the, the smell, the noise, the, uh, the passion of coaching. And that's, that's what I feel I do best. Obviously, your results haven't been great here. What is the immediate target? What is the first thing you have to do? I think the immediate target, when you look at the league table, it's quite congested and I think it isn't going to change. You know, um, you might look at maybe one or two of the clubs uh, like um, Watford and Burnley might have just sort of done enough to keep themselves away. Apart from them, I think everybody else is going to be involved if you're not a top club. So... It's going to be, uh, obviously, Sam looks like he's going into Everton. So there's a lot of experienced managers down the bottom of the league, all chasing uh, at the moment uh, just to, to get somewhere up the league. So for us, the immediate concern is to halt this run, get some points on the board and get ourselves in a position where we can try to attack in the top 10 if possible. You mentioned Sam there as well. We've seen a lot of jobs recently go to British managers, uh, Roy Hodgson, David Moyes. Uh, yourself, why do you think that is? Do you, do you think clubs are looking more for experienced managers now? Well, I don't know about experience. I think experience is important, but you know, when you look at our records, I think I average in the last seven seasons one point three points per game. So when you look at Sam and David Moyes, they're pretty similar. So we have a, we have a history of delivering. Um, I obviously uh, took over Palace in a similar situation and took them from relegation to 10th. <clears throat> so these things I think have to come into account when you're, when you're looking at your football club and it, and it doesn't look right if you're an owner. So I can understand uh, why that is. Um, and I think also um, you know, the, 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 you have to recognise this is a world market though that we have to compete in. So we're getting the top managers from abroad. Some have done very, very well and some not so well so it's a, it's a tough call for chairman I think and so I can't really answer for them but I can understand the decisions they've made uh, When you look at the West Brom squad do you think it is good enough to stay up this season or do you think you're going to have to reinforce in January? I think it's good enough to, to stay up but of course when I look at the clubs that are involved particularly at the moment down the relegation area I know they're going to do business so we can't take our eye off that we have to try and grow as much as we can if, if possible in January and like anything um, particularly I know from my experience at Newcastle uh, that you can lose key players in January and you need to be on your guard to make sure that you replace them so all those questions uh, are for about five weeks time but in the immediate concern is getting our first win for a while in the talks you, you had, were you promised money to spend in January or were you told that you're going to need to sell before you can buy? 
Well, I'm not going to, you know, publicly say what those discussions were because that would be unfair on us in terms of our position in the market. So I'm not going to hamper us with that. All I do know is that um, the, the group I have now is what I have now. And that is purely my focus is Saturday's game. And then after Saturday will be the next game. So focus on our group that we have here. Um, you know, we have two or three injuries that we hopefully we can clear up quickly and, and uh, have a, a full squad to, to choose from. You mentioned Saturday's game. Unbelievably, it's going to be against Crystal Palace. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's strange. Football works like that, and um, you know, it's a it's a it's a game that uh, I know, uh, of course, the manager very well. Uh, who's doing a, actually a good job? I think they're in probably the best place they've been for a, since the start of the season, and a group of players I know very very well. So, and a lot of people I love in that dressing room. So, it will be uh, slightly different difficult and different for me personally but personally it's not about me so it's about West Brom winning and my job uh, is uh, and anyone who knows me will know that I'll do everything I can to win this game. And you brought John Carver uh, with you obviously someone you've worked with before. Yeah. What do you think he can bring to the role? Well, I think John um, is a brilliant assistant manager to, to uh, not just myself but to, 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 to Bobby Robson and uh, and others and um, I think in his managerial experience at Newcastle he understood what it's like to be the manager so he has a good understanding of the kind of pressures that I come under he, uh, he's brilliant at his job and he's brilliant at how to manage me and make sure that I can deliver the best that I can do and, uh, and I think more importantly for the players here you've got to remember that you got uh, we both coach we both do a lion's share of the coaching that we got we can bring good experience and good good game plans I think to this group and um, uh, and I think uh, he has a manner around the training ground that not only players enjoy that staff enjoy and respect and have you had a chance to uh, speak to Tony Pulis at all no I haven't no I haven't spoke to Tony but I probably will at some stage yeah he's someone obviously I know very well there has been some criticism uh, amongst the uh, West Brom fans about the style of play uh, some of them weren't particularly happy with the style of uh, play under Tony Pulis is that something that you're looking to change or in the meantime is it just a question of avoiding relegation I think the most important fact is to win games right that's the bottom line and Tony does that very well and Tony does it in a different manner to, to me my best teams and I can only talk about myself uh, play on the front foot and try and put teams under pressure um, and sometimes get a bloody nose in doing that um, and that's what I'll deliver here at West Brom and ultimately hopefully um, somewhere along that line, um, we can get up to sort of 1.5, 1.7 points a game. And I think uh, I've achieved that in the past on certain at certain times at clubs. And that's what I'm going to hope to do here. Have you watched the last two performances uh, under under Gary Maxson? Was there things you saw there that you were impressed <coughs> with that you could build on? Well, I mean, of course, um, the, the the speculation and discussions uh, sort of started around the first game you were mentioning. So I obviously got a close eye on that, and I thought they did a really super job at Spurs, and Gary did a super job uh, in everything that he did. Um, and last night I didn't get to see and didn't know too much because we was sort of finalising stuff. Uh, but I felt uh, a little bit uncomfortable uh, sitting watching uh, Sky Sports and the uh, the score coming through so I was disappointed at the end but uh, I think Gary did a super job of steadying uh, the ship so to speak and have you spoken to Gary and was there any chance <coughs> of him staying well I think it had been difficult for Gary with me bringing in John Carver and the way I work uh, so I'll be speaking to Gary the club have obviously spoke to him uh, but I will put a call into him actually immediately after this Great. thank you Hi Alan, Hello. Um, there are other people at the club, but Gary Megson has left, what about the future of some of the other backroom staff? Well I think um, you know that's a process that's going on at the moment and, uh, and a process where I think as a manager you have to come in and, and, uh, and see what's being delivered here. Um, I spoke to all the staff today uh, who work here and told them the sort of culture that I would expect to, to, in, uh, to see going forward and the disciplines that I like in and around the training ground and some things that uh, I think are important uh, in any, or any organisation timekeeping and uh, cleanliness and stuff like that so we've had those discussions and I like look forward to hoping that they're seen through
great stuff. So you'll be on time for every press conference from now on. We I'm, you, I'm pretty good, that. actually. Yeah, yeah, I'm not bad. Yeah. That's what we yeah, 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 you're... Um, you're, you've met the chairman, clearly, uh, John yeah. Williams. What about the owners? Have you had any dealings with them yet? No. Is that an unusual situation for you to not have met the people who, who run the club? Um, well, well, it is for me, with the clubs that I've been at previously, but I don't think it's unusual so much in the Premier League these days. I mean, obviously, John's the chairman, so I answer to the chairman, and John, I guess, answers to the owner. So um, he has to manage me, and I have to manage him upwards. Uh, he's an experienced manager, uh, chairman, and somebody that, actually, when you speak to him, he has a real passion for West Brom, so... Uh, and a great experience at Blackburn so it was in, it was good conversations we had really about going forward and um, you know I picked up some stuff off him One of the things you said in the statement that the club put out was was about ambition what ambitions have the clubs I mean I imagine it's kind of stay up in the short term but what ambitions have they told you that they have for this club? Well <laughs> I think the most important thing is that you know it's so difficult in the Premier League to have ambitions to win the league to win trophies because you now have six or seven uh, clubs whose finance is way above the level that we're working at and, and they all uh, compete for every trophy. So even the League Cup now has become dominated by the top clubs. It's very difficult to break. We almost did it at Palace, of course, in the FA Cup. So you have to have those ambitions to try and win a trophy if you can, as difficult as it is. And I think that's the point I'm trying to make. I've come close very twice, very, very close to winning the FA Cup and one day I'd like to do it and that's the sort of ambition I'm talking about. Now Carve asked you earlier about kind of style of play. Albion fans have been talking about that for some time. Now you you've inherited a squad, you didn't choose this squad. How difficult would it be in the short and long term to shake things up and perhaps play the football you want to play? Yeah, I think in the in the short term to get to where I want to be for Palace is going to be difficult, of course, and uh, maybe even to Swansea. But not long after that, I'd like to think that they'll have a good idea of of what I want and what I expect. Um, certainly, um, there's enough experience in that dressing room and who have played at higher clubs than I've managed um, to to know um, that we can change our style a little bit and uh, and, and have success. Finally, for me, you said um, a short time ago that you've had the there for months out. You had the opportunity to go and kind of see coaching styles elsewhere. What have you learned, and do you feel that you're a better man for those eleven months out of the game? Well, I think you know, is it? It's all gets a little bit cynical sometimes about uh, coaches and uh, and uh, experience and stuff. But I think it, whatever age you are, if you you must try and better yourself and and learn from your mistakes. And I'm not going to sit here and say I haven't made mistakes. I have, and uh, I like to think I've learned from those. And it's about how you go forward with those and picking up different things and and uh, different uh, organisations, different sport. Formula One, I'm a big fan of English rugby. I'm a big fan of. And there are areas I've looked at, sports science, which I think uh, has become a little bit overprotective in the Premier League, is another area that I've looked at uh, to make sure that when I go back into the Premier League, uh, that uh, I do that better. Thank you. Alan, you mentioned in your very first answer about the tradition of this football club. I just wonder how much you're inspired by the history and tradition of West Brom in the challenge that lies ahead. Yeah, well, I knew that question was going to come about this football club. So, and I'm not armed with anything, but it did make me um, think about Brian Robson, a player that kind of represents what I like to put on a football pitch. And um, you know, I, I was I had to mark him in the cup final uh, twice, which wasn't something I enjoyed. I got to be honest. Uh, he was a fantastic player, and I think it was about 1978. He was in a baggy shirt and doing his stuff. And I think that's the that's the sort of era that uh, that I re I remember most about West Brom uh, as a sort of outsider because I'm you know I'm obviously <laughs> from London and it's not my team but that's the sort of uh, thing that I remember and Laurie Cunningham etc that area Cyril Regis who I actually played against at Hayes smashed up a couple of centre halves in non-league days even then yeah no one's managed more Premier League clubs than you have so is the Premier League is that true well you're up there aren't you? oh okay. I don't think so. Well, you're a very experienced Premier League manager. Yeah. Is managing in the Premier League more difficult now than when you started off? I think, um, you know, and obviously working at Sky, this this side of the business 
is changed dramatically. It's, it's an area you have to be very, very careful of. Your questions uh, can be interpreted slightly differently each and every way. And it's not just your opinion, it's somebody else's opinion and it's someone else at home and et cetera, et cetera. And you have to understand that there's a lot of uh, there's a criticisms come in in all shapes and sizes and and sometimes and sometimes praise you know and it can get out of hand and you can get carried away a little bit so it's about having a balance on that side with your kind of ego and the way that you are but more importantly managing the team for all of that uh, and not getting distracted by it and I think some managers do. It's funny for me how does the challenge here that you face at West Brom differ from other Premier League clubs you've managed? Well, I think um, when I uh, when I went back went into Crystal Palace, I think that was a that's something similar. There was playing quite um, a, a rigid game, and I and I uh, and I freed it up a little bit, and I hope to free up this team a little bit more if I can. And that's easier said than done because we need to start winning games to do that. But that's what I hope to do. We managed to do that. Crystal Palace has some fantastic results and performances against some of the top teams too. So that's what we hope to do here. Thank you. Okay, guys.